Yeah, well, it was always um, a dream of mine to to win a championship and a hold them, and you know, like something different. I already won a championship in the S15, and this was my next goal. Yeah, well, it came down to a few things. It was our 10th year anniversary um, in D1NZ, and it was the first non-S chassis to win the championship and first V8. So, you know, like to pull all those out um, this season was just so amazing and so rewarding as um, for me and the team. Um, the boys have worked so hard on this car. You know, like we've had to push it pretty hard over the years and do so many changes to make a big car like that and you know all the weight changes we've done and it's just all paid off and I think it was more rewarding than going out and winning the championship again in an S15 or something you know for me that was that was the drive and that's why I keep drifting the big drama of the weekend though went to Fangadan Woolhouse in the Castrol Edge Commodore. The team missing out on all of day one after developing a crack in the oil pump on the first lap of practice. The FDC team choosing to repair the engine before competition on day two. Yeah, day one practice, uh, we had dramas. Amazingly, I was, I was calm, you know, like, you know, I remember back in 2006, you know, when we won the championship and hey, you know, we never had big problems like that. But um, we'd always have the car and bits at the motel and the exhaust manifold would be all cracked and we'd be trying to TIG weld it up and MIG weld it and, you know, because it's just running like a bag of bums and, yeah, like, you know, having those sort of stresses, you know, like back then I, I knew good things always happened, you know, like we always, you know, podiumed when we had those sort of problems. Yeah, I think the, the boys in that were pretty, pretty shocked because... Um, yeah, I just was sweet, you know, I was like, oh, well, you know, we just, this is, it, it, it wasn't me, you know, like, I wasn't, you know, normally I would have been stressing out, and so very, very lucky, and, um, you know, we're going to do some changes to the, to the car, we're going to mount some big LED lights, because, you know, another corner, and I would have been into it, and I wouldn't have noticed our oil light, you know, I would have just been hammering it. And um, that definitely would have ended our championship, I would say, right there and then. Back on track and looking strong, drama returned right before qualifying as a diff bearing collapsed. And with replacement parts in and nerves running high, Fangadan kept calm under pressure, delivering an 82.5 run, taking pole position for the Achilles Radial Grand Final. We're here with the man himself, top qualifier, Fangadan Woolhouse. Man, big turnout on Taupo and you've just qualified pole position. Yeah, I know. Oh, I just, so many guys have helped me in the last few days and um, Zane just uh, drove all the way down here as soon as he heard what had gone wrong with the motor and they'd worked all night, finished at quarter to five this morning and um, then first practice, so we had no practice all weekend, first practice, um, a bearing collapsed or something in the diff, so diff was out and we're still going mate, but can't kill us that easy. You know, getting that number one qualifying was just, um, you know, I knew Mikey needed that, he needed that extra points and I knew um, at that stage I was like, okay, the first hurdle's out, you know, number one, you know, one, number one qualifying and, and have a bye and um, as much as we all wanted to battle, you know, but we, um, hey, you know, we've had to play it a bit smarter this year, you know, with stuff like that. Um, as much as I just want to go out and battle hard and get as close as I can and sometimes make mistakes, you know, and but um, this year we've, you know, put that aside and, and really 
um, just played it safe, I think, too. Little did race fans know this would become the defining moment of the grand final as Zach Pohl put on a stunning drive against the Red Bull RX-7. Going OMT, the rerun would see Zach Pohl continue his fantastic drive leading out from Mad Mike and despite a desperate chase run from the Mad Bull, the Rolay Bullet Skyline held its own on the lead run. Zach Pohl grabbing the win, giving Fangadan the 2013 championship title. We, we, we didn't think that we'd podium and, and you know, for, first of all, we didn't think, you know, we'd qualify number one and I definitely, I, you know, I had, um, I thought Redwood was, was most probably going to win that round, you know, like he was, he was there all year and, and I thought, you know, I, I was, I was quite concerned about Redwood and, um, yeah, I, I, I really thought he would have, um, he was going to win that, that, that day, so, um, yeah, and then the way things started panning out, and I guess after they, uh, Mikey got eliminated and, and um, Redwood got eliminated, I was just, you know, I was blown away, I was speechless, and, you know, I just wanted to go have fun, you know, like this is what we were there for, and and um, I think we just sat back and, and just, you know, just blazed it up, I didn't care what was happening, you know, I was... I was actually almost going to just start drifting right off where we warmed the tyres up and just link the whole thing. And um, I was just that excited just to, to get into it. Celebrating early, Fangadan knew he had the championship in the bag when he lined up against Driftcorp teammate Gaz Wider, but his history suggested these two weren't going to make things easy for each other. I think, you know, I think we drove better, you know, under, off the pressure and, um, yeah, we, and then we come up, um, it was me and Gaz up in the, you know, top four and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I didn't, I, you know, actually, well, I was going to sort of not let Gaz win, but I was like, I don't care, I don't know, I hope he beats me, sort of thing. So I'm just out there just swinging on it, just trying to, you know swing out wide lines and that so he could try you know so he could own me after watching you know footage and stuff like that like you know you go back and this car does like some quite amazing things like for a big car it switches super fast it just it, it looks it doesn't look normal and like it, it buzzes me out you know to this day yeah I, I don't know what we've done to achieve the the switch, like how it, you know, it just snaps. Like it, it sometimes it, I can't catch it, you know, it just goes. It's almost like it just, when I switch, it just spins out, and then it's just got good lock, and you catch it. Um, it's it's quite a, it's a real challenging car to drive, and um, I think mean, you know the boys they love that challenge. Like okay, they look underneath and we're like, how are we going to make this thing work? You know, like we've got to nut it out, and um, you know, it's not like a a uh, Sylvia or a Skyline or um, or an RX-7 that's that's got all the bits and pieces you can buy off a shelf and you know Driftworks hubs and all this sort of stuff it's just straight ex-cop car you know like modified a little bit and um, and we just try and make it work. The final battle of the season would be exactly how it started back in October 2012 as Fangadan lined up against defending champion Kurt Whitaker. It's very rewarding and, and I'm, you know, I'm so stoked for the boys and the car. I think the car is, um, should be, you know, proud of itself. If it had a heart, man, you know, like, if it could speak, you know, I think it was, um, it'd be pretty, pretty stoked as well. It was clear Fanger Dan was on perfect form in Taupo. Not afraid of holding back, Dan stuck to the rear of the Auto Shore Skyline, securing the 2013 championship title, grabbing his fourth podium and third round win of the season. It's, I think it's yeah, it's got definitely going to stay with me, getting it back out there with uh, the odd event, um, also you know getting maybe some other drivers in to drive it and and just yeah just sort of put it out there still you know if it's getting used um, 
I'd be, you know, I'm pretty happy to um, to see it out there as well. Hey, my next challenge is around the corner, and we go from there. Um, yeah, big big thanks to Tri-Ace Tyres for coming on board um, at the start of the season. Um, also, Cosmos Racing Wheels, Raceline, Team Suspension, Syndicate Signs, Oversteer TV, Juice Polishes, Zane at Checker Flag Automotive, Morgan Auto Painters for doing all the painting and all the repairs, Auto Tech Wong Grey, Wong Grey Roofing and Bricks, Jury Car Parts, NAC Insurance, uh, Century Batteries, and a big thanks to Cash Doll Edge for being the main sponsor on the car. And a big thanks to all my supporters and hope you enjoyed the championship this year. Yeah, we've got some big plans for next year, so follow us on Oversteer TV and Facebook and keep your eyes peeled for the new car.